What is it about certain injuries in sports that classify them as being the most severe in the history of the game? Some people would say that it depends on how much time the player missed and how it affected their career, while other people would argue that it depends on how severe the injury actually looked. But regardless of how you would answer that question, I think few people would argue the fact that the injury we're going to talk about in today's video is potentially the most severe and devastating injury in the history of the NBA. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian and for those new to the channel, I'm a doctor who's also an avid sports fan. And it's my goal in these videos to take a look at different sports injuries and break them down and explain them in a way that's easier for the common fan to understand and hopefully learn something from. Today's video is another commonly requested topic. We're gonna to be taking a look at Sean Livingston's devastating knee dislocation and talking in general about why these types of injuries are so severe and scare us doctors so much when we're covering events. As a warning for any of those sensitive to it, this is a pretty devastating injury. So we're gonna take a look today at why these knee dislocations can be so devastating. First off, our usual anatomy lesson, and I'm really excited today. I've got some props. This bone up here at the top, that's the femur, that's the big thigh bone. This bone down here at the bottom is the tibia, or your shin bone, for lack of a better word. And then this bone out here on the side is the fibula, not the fibia like some people like to say. This is the tendon from the quad muscle coming down across the top of the kneecap. This model also has the different ligaments and structures. So on the outside, this is our LCL or the lateral collateral ligament. Lateral is a fancy medical word for outside. On the other side of our model here, we have the MCL or the medial collateral ligament. And then if we look kind of inside, we can see our two meniscus structures sitting between the bones. And if we look on the back, we can see our ACL and our PCL. First off the bat, in order for a knee to become dislocated, you have to injure at least two of the four major ligaments in the knee. Now, in the case of Sean Livingston, he knocked off his ACL, his PCL, and his MCL, but the lateral ligament was still intact. The thing they don't show you in a lot of these anatomy models and pictures, but it's part of why this is such a potentially devastating injury, is the blood supply and the nerve supply to the limb and how it relates to the knee. This red tube in the back represents what we call the popliteal artery. So an artery is basically a blood vessel that carries blood from the heart out to the rest of the body, whereas a vein is a blood vessel that carries blood from the outside of the body back to the heart. This big vessel right here is taking blood from up above in the body all the way down the leg and into the foot. Now, if we think back to the events that transpired after the injury, a key point that potentially saved his limb from having to be cut off was that the trainers and doctors at the game were able to reduce or basically put back in place his knee. Imagine you've got this blood vessel that's actually pretty firmly adhered to the bones in the back of the knee. Imagine what might happen if the femur and the tibia were to become completely separated. So you can see a little bit here as I'm pushing it, how it stresses and how it bends that red tooth. Think of that as a blood vessel being stretched and pulled whenever the knee joint separates or move. Now what can happen is that that separation of that blood vessel can cause it to become completely pinched off or can even cause it to tear. So if you've got all of this blood flow that's trying to get down to the leg and you take this blood vessel and completely tear it or rip it in half, you're not getting blood down to the rest of the leg. And as we know, the muscles and everything need the blood to work. So that's why this is such a potentially devastating injury. It's all about the effect on blood flow to the rest of the leg below the knee. The reason it's so important to try to put the knee back in place is potentially if something's pinching that blood vessel, you can put the knee back in place and relieve some of that tension and some of that pressure so that hopefully the blood can flow back down into the foot. The key part here is the longer you wait to do that, the harder and harder it gets. So when this happens in a game, the doctors and the trainers are sprinting out there to try to reduce that knee as quick as they can because if you wait, the muscles get tight, the muscles get stiff, and it gets harder and harder and harder to put it back in place. This blood vessel doesn't always get damaged. Roughly 30% or a third of the time that the knee dislocates, it get damaged in some way. And there's a clock to all of this. So whenever Sean Livington's knee dislocated, there was essentially an internal clock in the head of that trainer and the physician knowing that they were up against time to try to make sure the blood supply was okay to the foot. If the blood flow is impaired below the knee for more than around five to six hours, 
that's when you can start to see irreversible muscle and cell death. And if all those muscles and structures die, they become infected and all kinds of other bad stuff, and that's when you potentially have to get the limb cut off. Whenever there's been decreased blood flow for around eight hours, sometimes up to 85% of the time, the leg has to end up getting cut off. As we know from Sean Livingston being in the NBA, obviously that was not the case. By the time he got to the hospital, there was still good blood flow, nothing had been torn or damaged, but the doctors didn't really know that when he was on the court. And so that's what made this such a severe, potentially devastating injury. Thankfully, he was able to make an awesome comeback and recovery. All the other structures were fixed and now he's an NBA champion. So that is it for this video. I hope that was informational. I hope you learned something and that idea of why knee dislocations and that injury in particular what's considered to be such a devastating and severe injury. Thanks as always everybody for watching these videos. Let me know your comments below. Also give me some comments about what other videos you wanna see. More to come and we'll see you next time. Bye.